but at this moment what we have right over here is a desktop full-fledged desktop linux really lightweight that we can use for anything that we want it has these shortcuts right over here so that we can in a graphical interface really easy for any level of user to configure apps on the background like Plex and so on and so forth and at the same time we did install docker and today i'm going to share with you the easiest way to install docker on the raspberry pi 5 or if you have an older version of raspberry pi like 4 or even a windows computer or a virtual machine but i will be using raspberry pi 5 i will leave the link down below for this starter kit so that you can check out prices and availability and whatnot but it brings everything that we need to start up now docker will give us the freedom to install thousands of apps and you can go to docker hub and we'll see right over here that we will have a lot of options but nonetheless i believe that we shouldn't limit the raspberry pi 5 only to docker so in this particular video i'm going to share with you the easiest way to install a operating system right over here that will allow us to have a desktop where we can install browsers office suit and so on and so forth but at the same time will give us the freedom with one click or two to have a lot of apps installed like plex server home assistant mb Kodi, whatever we need and on top of that docker which will give us a lot more freedom that being said let's go straight for it and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official oim keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides windows 11 pro if you are looking for windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our microsoft soft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below and now on my windows desktop we are going to download two files first of all is balena etcher if you have already used then you don't need to install but if you don't then just download you will love it because this is one of my favorite tools balena etcher and rufuge which are tools that we use here a lot on the channel secondly we will need a copy of diet pi which in my opinion is the best operating system available for the raspberry pi regardless of the version so once you have balena etcher and diet pi actually diet pi you will need to go to the download and then on download you will need to select raspberry pi in this particular case raspberry pi 5 but you can also select for other devices including pc so if you want to test out this on your pc through a virtual machine on VirtualBox or vmware you can or if you want to run it directly you can as well in my particular case let's go for raspberry pi 5 which is still under testing but for the test that i've been doing quite stable so no issues whatsoever and once you have the image and balena etcher then we just need to use balena etcher to write the image to our micro sd cards and that is it once we have it done and i did it already but we are going to turn on our raspberry pi 5 and i'm going to do the rest of the video with you step by step so that you can understand how easy it is to have these three different scenarios a desktop available for work and also the diet Pi operating system that will allow us to have a lot of freedom to install apps with one click and then on top of that docker so the system is booting and the first info that we will get is our ip address now one of the things that i want to show you is that at this moment i've got the raspberry pi connected to the display that i'm recording and you are seeing on screen at the same time but if i want i don't need a display i can go to my windows computer or any other computer with mac os whatever doesn't matter and we will need to use a software to access in this particular case i'm using putty so i'm going to open the address that i'm seeing on that screen i will accept i will use root which is the default and i will use diet pi which is the default so what i have right now is i did log in with this computer so i'm controlling that computer over the windows machine and actually i didn't want to do this way i wanted to show you everything right over there but if i did log in right over here this would be the option that we have so let's keep on doing right over here but having in mind that doing on putty or just by looking at the screen and saying okay log in it would be exactly the same so let's try something else right now which is we are at the middle of something here on a remote location but if we go right over here and press enter 
uh, I'm going to do root and press enter. I'm going to say diet pi. Press enter and it will say diet pi first run setup is currently running on another screen. Please resume setup on the active screen. I'm going to press OK. So let's do something. I'm going to close this one right over here. Now let's press OK. So if I did confuse you, I'm sorry about that. But what I did right over here on the Windows computers, just to show you that in this particular case, we can control the Raspberry Pi over any computer on our network. Nonetheless, if you are a bit confused, whatever I put there, which was only root and the password, which is diet pi, you can do it right over here and the result is exactly the same. Now it detected my keyboard, so I'm going to say, yeah, just a generic keyboard. It's not English, it's Portuguese. So select other Portuguese and right over here, I'm going to select Portuguese and OK and no compose key. I don't want to change any password passwords right now because this is just for the tutorial and I don't want to forget the passwords and I'm going to leave the console okay. Right now we have Diet Pi software installed and if I want to install Docker right now we can. Let's go to the browse software and if I go, if I want to install Plex server, I've got it right over here or MB or if I want any other of these apps for media, we can. And if I want to install Docker, I can just go right over here and select Docker. No, this is Docker Compose, but we have Docker right over here and Port Trainer. So we can install Docker and if we don't want a desktop app, then this is the best way and this is the short way. Press space right over here and there we go and then continue with the installation. But I'm going to remove and remove because we actually want to install a desktop. So for those that just want Docker, you can move ahead and go where it says Docker installation on the timestamps. But for those that actually want a desktop, then follow along with me. And I just wanted to explain the potential that we have right over here. So let's go for the desktop, which is really simple and fast. We are going to select the first one, which is LXDE. So I'm going to press space. And right now I'm going to press enter. And it did not install yet. We will need to go right over here to the install and press OK. It will say the following software will be installed. LXDE Ultra Lightweight Desktop. Great. Let's press on OK. And right over here we will have the option to install Firefox or Chromium. Let's select Chromium and confirm. So right now what's going to do is just a normal installation. And there we go. We have the desktop installed. So we will finish on this menu. I'm going to say opt out because I'm not going to use this besides the tutorial. And right now we have some options right over here. Let me show you that on the Windows computer, which is on a remote location on my network. If I go and use Purdy, for example, and open and log in as root and then password is diet what will happen is that I will have exactly the same that I've got right over there. So the initial idea where I did show you Putty was exactly this one right over here to show you that we can access remotely or we can access via a display. Now in terms of options, I'm going to go and select Diet Pi Launcher. And for that, I just need to write Diet Pi Launcher, press OK. And right now, let's go to the configuration just by pressing Enter. And right over here, let's go to Auto Start Options. And we are going to select the light DM to be the first thing that we want to boot. Because at this moment, the option is zero, which is manual login, as we've seen. But I want this option right over here, which is the light DM, which is the desktop that we just installed. So let's press enter. And it will say at this moment, current auto start option 16, which is the light DM. So we can press exit. And there we go. Right now, let's do a hard reboot. So it will do its normal Boot, as you could see on the screen, but instead of going to the manual configuration, it will go to the desktop. So right over here, I'm going to select my user, which is root. The password is diet by, which we can change at any moment. Press login and Chana, here we are on diet by. Now let's change just resolution so that we can see a little bit better, you and me. So let's press save. And besides that, Chana, so this is completely optional. I did uh, change the resolution so that we can see better. It was in 4K. And I also changed the desktop because Diet Pi is, in my opinion, the best operating system for the Raspberry Pi, but the wallpaper is not that good. I prefer a cleaner look. Right now we have the desktop app, so we can use the Raspberry Pi 5 as any normal desktop with browsers and so on and so forth, but we will also be able to install 
install apps like Plex to run on the back end. We can install Home Assistant, all those apps that you have seen. And also there is a friendlier way that you can just check the software, which is if we go to home page and then diet by software, you can see all the apps right over here. All of these we can install and run on the back ground on the Raspberry Pi. One of them is the Docker right over here and Port Trainer, which is what we are going to install next. And we have several options. Now these shortcuts right over here so that we understand are shortcuts for the Diet Pi. So if I press right over here, Diet Pi Config, it will take me to this menu right over here where we have options for the display, for the Auto Start, for example, which we did chose. Uh, to have the light DM as we have right over here and we can close this one and if we go to the diet by launcher we have a general uh, so if I press the feature rich configuration it will take me to that previous menu that we were watching so we have right over here a centralized option and then if we close right over here but before we close if we go here to the install optimized software and press enter we will go to this menu. Now let's just ch check right over here. If I press diet by software, it will go to the same menu. So don't be confused because there is one general menu and then several smaller menus. And these are just shortcuts. Now, one other thing is if I go right over here to the system tools, you will have a lot more shortcuts. And this is just to ease up on those that are using diet pie for the first time so don't be scared everything it's really easy we just need to get used to it and in um, i would say one or two days you will be more than fine actually probably not even that now we have the desktop ready but i want to mention here that at any moment i can access this computer while someone else is using for browsing the web or using for a gaming session on the raspberry pi 5 or even do some homework on the office tools i can go to any other computer on my network and if i open it up just my credentials buy it by and i will have access to everything that i've got right over there so if i go to the diet by launcher so let's press ctrl c just select it and right click with my mouse we will be able to get into the same menu that we have access right over here so just a reminder that at any given moment i can access the raspberry pi from any other computer now let's install docker and for that we can go directly to the diet pi software and right over here we have the option to uh, feature rich configuration tool for your device or find software or select software and this is what we are going to do we are going to browse and we have seen that we have a lot of options right over here but at this moment we are looking for docker and here it is docker so i'm going to press space i'm going to select port trainer as well so that we can use port trainer as the interface so it's easier for us and i'm going to press enter and this is the same way that we did install the desktop OS. So we, we select by space and then press enter and then we go here to the menu where it says install, press enter and it will say the following software will be installed, Docker and Port Trainer. So let's press OK and it will start doing its installation. This will take about a minute or something like that but one of the things that I want to show you because this will be very useful for any software that you install. Now if this is the first time installing Docker or any other through the diet by one thing that you might want to check out is the individual apps so of port trainer for example if we open it up it will say how to set up and details i'm going to press view and it will say that once you have installed you will need to go to your web interface via the port 9002 so we will need to put in our ip address followed by 9002. Now, this is very useful because if you set up, for example, a Plex server right over here, you have the same exact information. So we will go to the Plex server and it will say once it's ready, you will need to have your IP address followed by 32,400 slash web. If we take a look at any other, or if we select, for example, PyHole, it will give us the same kinds of information right over here that we need to access our installation. Now, that being said, uh, the screen it has closed after installing Port Trainer. So as we have seen here on the Port Trainer access, we will need our IP address, which I'm going to put right over here, followed by 9002. So I can press enter. And at this moment, I've got 
support trainer and failure and I'll try as the test is known. This is where we are going to insert our first user. But this is port trainer running Docker on the Raspberry Pi being accessed on this computer, but I can access anywhere. And at the same time, I can use my desktop to do whatever I want. So let's just create right over here really quickly. So diet pi twice, so I don't forget, create user. And here we are on our port trader. So yeah, press uh, get started and we can go to local. We will only have one container at this moment, which is port trainer itself. But if we want, we can go to containers, add a container, give the name. We can search for a container on Docker Hub. So if you are not sure what you can install, you have a lot of apps right over here. And then there are a lot of guides on the web. I did share a few already sharing how to install a few apps on Docker. So if you feel the need for that, just search the channel or search YouTube and you will find a lot of info. But at this moment, what we have right over here is a desktop, full-fledged desktop Linux, really lightweight that we can use for anything that we want. It has these shortcuts right over here so that we can in a graphical interface really easy for any level of user to configure apps on the background like Plex and so on and so forth. And at the same time, we did install Docker and Port Trainer, which is now running, giving us the option to install a lot more apps. All of this in a really great package lightweight that will give us the freedom to evolve and hopefully i could achieve that with this video hopefully it was helpful and if it was don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one